Well, good morning, Northside. My name is Jacob. I'm on the student team, but I'm glad you're here. The morning after thunder, which means um, you either really love Jesus or you're here to repent about what you said in traffic last night. So either way, <laughs> we're glad that you're here with us. Um, and if you've not been with us this year, we're, we're going through the series called Quest 52, and we're just answering questions um, each week. And as we go through the next few weeks, you're going to notice we're talking about the power of Jesus a lot. The power of Jesus, these amazing stories that Jesus has done. And and to start today, I just want to ask a question. And I want you to think about it where you're sitting. You you can answer it maybe to the person next to you if you'd like, or maybe you just want to answer it in your head. I just want you to think about this question. What do you need right now? What do you need right now? And maybe you already know, it, it immediately popped into your head, maybe walking in here. You already knew what you needed. There's a reason you're here, right? You're like, I need this. Maybe you have a long list and there's this and this and this and this and this and this. There's all these different things that you need. Um, I asked some people this week that exact question. I asked some staff members at Northside. I asked them my high school small group. I asked some of my friends. I said, hey, what do you guys need right now? Uh, and just some of the answers that I got. Uh, number one, a pack of gum. I mean, when you need it, you need it, right? <laughs> like you need a pack of gum sometimes. Uh, two or three more hours in a day. A polar pop, the person who said that is sitting right over there. I can see him in this room. Um, More coffee, someone said. Uh, Someone said a vacation. No, seriously, a vacation. Someone else said a vacation. Someone else said a vacation. Someone else said a vacation. That's four vacations. Um, I'll take four vacations. That sounds great. Like, I I would love that. Um, one, one, One person said a restroom without construction workers outside of it. Um, that is our next steps minister, Kyle Wilson. I won't tell anybody else, but he needs to be on blast for that. All right, like it is what it is. Um, two people said a house cleaner. Someone said a nap. Um, one person said a better job. That was not a Northside staff member. <laughs> Someone said the ability to read minds. Um, one person who had just had a baby said a receipt to return my kid every night from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. <laughs> It was not me, Scout's Honor, right? Like, I swear. Someone else said fulfillment. That's a little different. Someone said peace of mind. One person said emodium. Woof. <laughs> if you don't know what emodium is, uh, Google it later. One person said healing. I don't know if it was the same person. <laughs> One person said peace, patience, and understanding. Um, someone said you to talk less on the weekends. How did that get in there? That's weird. That's crazy. You know how my parents are. Um, someone said, more relationships. I just want to pause because that's, that's been one that I've heard a lot this week. Maybe for you it's not more relationships, but it's just a relationship, and that's what you need. Maybe you're looking for that person. Maybe you're looking for a marriage. Maybe you're looking for a friendship. I don't know, but maybe that's what you need. Someone said a clear answer about a difficult decision. Maybe that's you. And you have these two options in front of you and you just need to know which one is it. Is it going this way or is it going this way? Or maybe there's no options in front of you, but that question still remains. And you're like, God, can I just get a clear answer, please? Like, what am I supposed to do in this situation? I'm trying to be obedient. I'm trying to be faithful. I just don't know what to do. Someone said more money. Someone said simplicity, in solitude. That's a lot of needs, right? And I, I guarantee if we wanted to, we could spend time today and, and I could put a mic up here and I could say, hey, single file line starting right here, come across, you're gonna go up to the mic and say, hello, my name is Jacob, I need, and, and we could have a laundry list of, of, of unique needs within this church. And the question we're answering today is can Jesus provide for my needs? And you look at all those needs and then you can think about all the needs that you have and you can say like, can he provide for my needs? We have this thing at Northside called Pastor on Call. Um, and, and every few weeks um, we, we, we take turns and if someone has an issue or if someone um, needs to talk to someone, someone needs prayer, they can call the church and they'll get transferred to one of the pastors here. And, and someone called me once and uh, it was actually just a few weeks ago and, and I answered the phone and said, hey, like, how can I help you today? What's going on? And the lady on the other end of the phone, she said, hey, I need food. And I don't know what your story is in life, but if I had to guess, a majority of us in here have never had to ask for food because we needed it. We didn't have food. We didn't have the ability to eat in a day. And that conversation jarred me a little bit. And I looked at her, I I, I guess I talked to her on the phone and I was like, hey, hey, tomorrow is our food pantry, Thursday. Could you wait till then or do you need it tonight? And she said, no, I need it tonight. That's a need. That's a basic need. 
And we're asking the question today, can Jesus provide for my needs? And some of them are emotional, some of them are physical, some of them, some of them are, are, are mental, some of them are, 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 are more on the spiritual side. Um, and we just ask the question again and again and again, can Jesus, can you provide for these needs? And I think the answer is yes, by the way. Like you look at Matthew 6, he talks about it. He says, don't worry about these things. Saying, hey, what will we eat or what will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But our heavenly father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. And I read that verse and it's, it's a little difficult for me because I stop and, and, and in the one hand over here, I read the verse and it says like, hey, the father knows your needs. You're like, you don't have to worry about the food and the drink, what you're gonna wear. Like he, he knows what you need. And if you seek first the kingdom, he'll provide all those things. But then I hold in this hand over here, a woman who called me and she said, I need food. And I'm trying to reconcile, how can those two things be together? And you can read it and you can be like, well, it says seek the kingdom of God above all else. And then you'll have all you need. So does that just mean if I follow Jesus a little bit better, she's like all my needs are gonna be right on my porch when I get home? I don't think so. I've known people who follow Jesus way better than me and they still have needs. And so I, I, I don't think Jesus is saying just follow better and you're gonna get what you need. But I think what he is saying is there are times where what you think you need isn't what you need, isn't what you actually need. Um, it's like, when you're hungry, we know this, we've learned this in our lives. Sometimes when I'm hungry, I'll go to my wife and be like, man, I'm hungry, what can I get? And she's like, you should get a glass of water. And I'm like, did you not hear me? <laughs> like, I said hungry, not thirsty. And she's like, no, like you're actually thirsty. And so I'll go and get a glass of water and I'll drink it and I'm not hungry anymore. It's crazy, science, right? Like it's just like this amazing thing. And what I find out is like, what I think I need isn't what I actually need. And Jesus is saying the same thing in this verse. Hey, what you think you need isn't what you actually need. But then it begs the immediate question, what is it that I actually need? And the way I'm gonna say it today is this, what is our greatest need? What is, the, what is the deepest need of our souls that we need this? What is the need that Jesus is talking about that he's gonna provide all that we need? What is it that we actually need? Abraham Maslow, he's a um, psychologist. He came up with this theory, it's called the hierarchy of needs. And it's this pyramid. And at the very bottom, which is our most basic need, it's the physiological needs. It's your food, it's your water, it's your clothing, it's your air, it's your shelter. And I gotta ask, like, is that our deepest need? Is it, is it just for food and water? Like, does the Bible say, seek first the kingdom of chicken? I don't think so. And then on the very top of the pyramid, maybe like, well, that's the most, that's the most important need um, is the idea of self-actualization. And what, and what that's getting into is the idea of you becoming your best self. And I gotta ask, is that our deepest need? just to be like on our full potential, because doesn't that make our need about ourselves? So what is our greatest need? Church, what do we actually need? And here's the good news for everyone in this room. Um, I, I don't have to know because the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us for a fact what it is. And, and I will say this every single time, but I think there's power when the church opens the word together. And so we're gonna be in Mark chapter six, verse 34. And so if you have um, your digital Bible, maybe on your phone, maybe you got an iPad, you can open up to Mark chapter six, verse 34. If you've got your physical Bible, open it up. If you wanna read exactly what I'm reading, I'll be in the NLT, the New Living Translation. But Mark 6, 34, it says this, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's, it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said to them, you feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn money enough to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. And they came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on, uh, on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. And Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and he looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. And don't miss this verse. If you're an underliner, if you're a circular, if you're a highlighter, this is the time. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. 
Now let's just pause for a second and just talk about the amazing miracle it is. That's awesome. That's really cool. It says 5,000 men were fed. Uh, people estimate it was probably close to 15,000 people. Can you imagine 15,000 people and you got five loaves of bread and two little fish? But Jesus makes it happen. And I, I wish I could have been there to see what happens. Like, did he have a basket? And he just like Oprah style was like, you get a bread, you get a fish. Like everybody gets fish. Like, I don't know. Or maybe like he like broke the bread and every time he broke it, like it was two full loaves again. I have no idea. But he, he feeds all these people. And then more than that, um, it says they have enough and actually more than enough, they have leftovers. And the spiritual significance, it says they have 12 baskets. Don't miss that. I mean, it's not an accident, it's an announcement. Because those 12 baskets, they, they, they correlate with the 12 tribes of Israel. And Jesus is saying like, hey, this is the announcement. I am who I said I am. Like I, I, I am the Messiah, I am the Christ. This is happening right now and I can provide for these needs. And we love this story because it's like, man, that is exactly what we want. Like think about what you need right now. You would love if I said, and Jesus is gonna give you everything you want and more. And in the lobby, we have kingfish. You'd be like, really kingfish? I love kingfish, but maybe like you'd be like is, that, that, like, is that what I want right now? But you would love if Jesus provided more than you had. If he would give you leftovers, because those are stories we're sharing. Um, I've experienced this in Guatemala um, a few weeks ago. I, I went down with a group of high schoolers and some of our leaders. And let me just say, 10 out of 10 would recommend going to Guatemala with high schoolers. They are amazing. And the way that they love Jesus down there is incredible. Um, but we were on house builds. And um, I was on one house build, but on the other house build, this story came out. And my friend C.A. And um, C.A. T- tells me the story. He says, on the last day of the build, the mom comes up and she says, hey, um, I would love if some of the leftover you know, scraps of wood, if you would build my son Edwin a desk to do his schoolwork. And I, in case you've never been to Guatemala, um, the needs in America versus the needs in Guatemala, vastly different. And so, you know, we, we go down and we build this house for this family that's in need that they make like $35 a week. And for her to say, hey, I, I need this, desk, I think it meant something. And so CA, he's probably wiping tears. You know, he's just like, I got you. Like, I'll make this desk. And so, you know, it's coming down to the end and we're doing the final touches and, and he's looking around. All of a sudden he sees over here this, this, this unused two by fours. There's a few two by fours. And so he goes over and he looks at him and he calls the build team lead over. He says, hey, Wilmer, come here. And he says like, hey, can I use these two by fours to build this desk for Edwin? And Wilmer says, no, no, no. Like we need all the two by fours. Like we have to, like, like every wall needs a certain amount. There's studs and stuff like that. And CA is like, no, we've, we've done all the work. Like these are left over. And Wilmer kind of stops and he looks and he's like, no, that's impossible. He's like, we, like what? Like he kind of looks at that and he looks at the house. He's like, these shouldn't be here. <laughs> And he like almost like stops and is like, these should actually be in the house. And they go and they're like, did we forget a wall? Like, is there like a stud missing? Like, do we need to go through and be like, oh my gosh, like we forgot a whole wall in the house. And they go through and there's no, there's no missing studs and no missing walls. And there's just these extra pieces of wood. And one was like, yeah, like build the desk. So I got some pictures. Check this out. This is CA. He's building the desk. He's using the scraps. And then this next picture is our friend Edwin. He's sitting at the desk. Yeah, that's an amazing story, right? That's, that's... And I think you guys would like it. I was like, amen, now we can go. But that's not how it ends. And, and I think that's what we want, right? We, we want every story to end just like that. We want God to come down and to provide the extra two by fours in our life. We want to say, God, give me this, provide this and make it enough and actually have some leftovers too. That's what we want. But church, I don't think our greatest need is just simply that Jesus can give to us. I don't think it's some thing at all. Like when he got off the boat, he didn't stop and say like, okay, 15,000 people here. Um, I should give them some bread. He doesn't say that. And I, I don't think our greatest need is just something that we can get. In fact, I know it's not because look at what Jesus says their need is. Go back with me to verse 34. It says, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And please note this, our greatest need isn't something, it's not something Jesus can get us. It's someone. He says, I see that there are sheep without a 
shepherd, a person. He's talking about himself and church. We need to understand this. Our greatest need will always be for Jesus. Every single time. That is our greatest, greatest need. And I think we read this story and we're like, mm, I don't know. Like this story, like isn't this just about empty stomachs? Like it's about like some guys were hungry. And so Jesus is like, here's some food. It's not about empty stomachs at all. In fact, if you really look at the story, it starts and it's about empty souls. And he gets off the boat and he sees that there's sheep without a shepherd. He says, hey, I need to spend time with them. They need the shepherd. They need the presence of God in their lives. But because he's filling up their souls, all of a sudden there is a need for food. But it starts with empty souls. And Jesus, he cares about our physical needs, church. Please hear that. If you're going through something, he cares about our physical needs, but he will always prioritize our spiritual ones. Always put those first. See, our physical needs... Um, they matter because they affect our right now. They affect our temporary. And, and you, if you're hungry in this room right now, it's probably hard to pay attention because you're like, man, like he keeps talking about fish, right? Like time to go. Like I, that's a need that you have. I mean, if, if you're thirsty, if you're cold, if you're sick, that matters. That affects our temporary. But physical needs affect our temporary. Spiritual needs determine our eternity. And please see the difference. And you could take it to the extreme. You're like, yeah, but Jacob, what if I starve to death? Hmm? Like that's a physical need that eventually like killed me. Well, here's the deal. Our physical needs are temporary because we're temporary. But our spiritual needs decide our eternity. And Jesus cares about our physical needs. But he prioritizes our spiritual needs on top because he knows what the most important need in our life is. It is for him. It's not something, it's someone. What Jesus is doing is he is he's zooming out from the limited lens of life that we have, or we just see right in front of us and we have the physical right now. And he's saying, hey, you have a life on earth, but you have an eternity that's available to you if you focus on the right need, if you know what you really, really need. And it's Jesus. Um, I can't make this stuff up. Last night, um, I was in bed watching Thunder because I'm a local to New Albany. That's what we do, right? Like, we don't go to thunder. Um, and they're talking, and, and there's this moment where they kind of go super heavy. And, and, and one of the news anchors, he says, you know, it's been a really heavy week, two weeks for Louisville. He threw a number out there. He said 14 homicides in the past two weeks in Louisville. That's some needs. That's heavy. And he goes on a little bit, and he, and he says, like, you know, Louisville needs a reason for some hope. And he says, Louisville needs, and I'm like, are we doing this? Like, is he going, it's like, is he going to say the name of Jesus on live TV right now? Here we go. And he says, Louisville needs thunder. <laughs> and my wife in the background goes, Jesus. <laughs> like, and I was like, it's comical. I was just like, what are you, what are you, like in the middle of our hurts and our pain and our confusion in this area, what we need is a fireworks show? Like, and then don't hear me, like I knew what he was doing. I'm not some angry prophet who's just like, like I'm not, I'm not being that guy. But I understand that he was saying like, we need something to come together and we need some fun. We need something like to, like, to, to focus on. That's what we need. But what we really need is, is Jesus. Can you imagine the difference that our, our, our city would be if every single person was following Jesus? It would not look the same. And, and what's crazy um, and, and an irony of ironies is they do the whole countdown, they turn the keys, and it's like five, four, three, two, one. And then guess what happened? Nothing. It was awesome. Brad in the back, he told me that they're calling it Blunder Over Louisville. Like that is great writing. And I'm sitting there and like he had just said like, Louisville needs thunder. And then it breaks. And I was just like, how's your little fireworks show now? Right? Like, <laughs> what do you really need? <laughs> we don't need something. Gosh, we need someone. Louisville doesn't need thunder over Louisville. Louisville needs Jesus. Our church doesn't just need a new something. It needs Jesus. We don't just need something that Jesus can give to us. We need Jesus. So church, let me just ask you one more time. What do you need right now? Something or someone? Follower of Jesus in the room, let me just get at you a little bit. Why are you here right now? Why do you follow Jesus? Is it because of what he can give to you or because of who he is to you? See, we don't follow Jesus um, because 
of what he can give to us. We follow Jesus for who he is for us and to us. If you just follow Jesus because of what he can give to us, we, we turn him into a holy vending machine. All right, and we pray and we come to church and we, you know, we help people across the street. We do our good deed for the week and we step up and we're like, boop, Ford Bronco, please. <laughs> like, 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 please give, I need, need a Ford Bronco. Like the baby blue with the doors that come, come off. Like, can you give that to me right now? And we turn our following Jesus into just what he can give to us. But here's the deal. When we do that, when the moment that he doesn't give us what we think we need, even though what we need isn't what we actually need, the moment he doesn't give it to us, our followership breaks because it's been built upon what he can give to us and not who he is to us. On the other side, though, if we follow Jesus for who he is, then our view of him isn't, isn't just a, a holy vending machine, but it's, it's as Lord and it's a savior and it's as worthy of being followed regardless of what happens in our lives because of who he is and really what we're viewing him as, as our shepherd. Just like Jesus said, we were, they were sheep without a shepherd. We view him as our shepherd. Um, this week, a verse that's just been on my heart a lot, probably because the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about it, is Psalm 23. And maybe you know this verse. It, it, Psalm 23, 1, it starts, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Jesus viewed them as sheep without a shepherd. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I don't think that's an accident. And what I'm about to say might shock you a little bit, but I love how the King James Version says this. And I know what you're thinking. He can't wear skinny jeans and read the King James. We can, all right? <laughs> we sang a hymn today. We're breaking down barriers. This is great. But it says it like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And David Guzik, he's, he's a pastor that I really respect and listen to. Um, he says that when King David says this, it's, it's a twofold statement. On the one hand, he, he, he's, he's saying, I declare trust in the shepherd. I declare trust that whatever I go through in life, I will have what I need, even when it feels like I don't actually have what I need. And you need to hear this. Um, <laughs> David went through some times where he had some needs. If you don't know the life of David, there's a story in the Bible where he is so hungry that he has to steal bread from the temple. Like he's stealing bread from the church. There's a moment where his, his mentor, his, the king of Israel, um, tries to kill him. The Bible says he tries to pin him up against the wall with a spear. And then he chases him out of the kingdom. And he chases him around for 10 years trying to kill him. Eventually he becomes king, but his son turns on him. His own son turns on him and tries to take away the kingdom. He turns the whole country against him. And there's moments of need. And we haven't even mentioned that's the same David who's in front of Goliath who has a need to defeat this giant that's right in front of him. And David had times of need, but still somehow he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's because he has a shepherd that he can declare trust. That no matter what he goes through, he will have what he needs. So he declares trust on one end, but then the other thing he's saying is the decision of contentment that no matter what he goes through, whatever what he gets, it will be enough. And I think what's happening here is David um, isn't expecting his circumstances to change, um, but he is expecting his spirit to change. And when we view the Lord as our shepherd and we declare that trust and we decide that contentment, I'm not gonna promise you that the life around you is gonna change, but I will promise you that your life will change because how you view it will be different. See, when the Lord is your shepherd, you will have what you need because you will have Jesus. And he is enough. Let me ask you one more time, church. What do you need right now? something or someone we declare trust in our shepherd and our Lord and Jesus no matter what you go through it will be enough you will have what you need because you have the shepherd will you de decide contentment that whatever you go through whatever you get in life you shall not want because you know you have exactly what 
you need? Will you make your greatest need Jesus? Knowing that our physical effects are temporary, but our spiritual decides our eternity. And we get a great reminder of this every single week in communion, exactly what we need. Um, I remember one of the first times I ever took communion, I didn't really know what I was doing yet. And we were visiting a church. We just moved to the area. And uh, the, 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 the tray passes and there's just pieces of bread and, and little cups of juice. And because I didn't know what I was doing, I just looked at it and said, nice, a snack out loud in church. <laughs> and I got in trouble. <laughs> you know why I said that? I didn't know how much I needed what communion signifies. I didn't know how much I needed a savior that would take my place, that would take my sin, that would take my shame and put them on the cross with him. I didn't know how much I needed that. I didn't know how much I needed Jesus to rise from the dead, to trample sin and to trample death, that I don't have to experience that, that I will die, but then I get to live in eternity. I don't have to have a second death because I have Jesus in my life and because he is my greatest need. My, this, my spiritual eternity is decided forever. I didn't know how much I needed Jesus, but now I do. And I hope every day I know a little bit more that my greatest need will always be Jesus and church. I hope the same for you. In a second, we're going to take communion and we're going to have um, Psalm 23 up on the screen, the entirety of it. What I'm going to invite you to do is just as you're taking communion, maybe before, maybe after, and during that reflection time, to read the whole psalm and to see how Jesus does provide things, how the Lord provides throughout the entire psalm, but it all starts not with something, but with himself, someone, how his presence is enough, how who he is is enough. Before he gives us anything, because he will and he cares about us, who he is is enough. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I shall not want. I'm gonna pray and we can reflect together as a church. God, we love you. And God, my goodness, you are good. And we could spend forever talking about the power of you, of your son, of the Holy Spirit, God, of how, how you can just make amazing things happen. But Lord, right now we're just asking that we come to fully realize how much we need you. And God, that every single day that need grows. And we realize how good you are. Lord, help us to declare trust no matter what the situation is. Help us to decide contentment and know that we have enough because you are our provider. You are our shepherd. You are our Lord. You are our savior. You are you and you are enough. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can take communion and reflect on this psalm now.